Niarco, your your good buddy from Chicago, mm -hmm. um, came out with a statement that he would welcome a change to the United States men's national team. I, is he just what's he smoking over there? Well, you know, it's it's funny because he originally came on and said that he doesn't want to play for the United States. He wants to play for Ghana, mm -hmm. and you know, he's realized that he's now twenty six. I don't think Ghana is going to become knocking because they have just as good of options, if not better options. Right. Um, in all honesty, the U.S. has better options. Right. I mean, Niarka would be far down in debt, even if he were a U.S. citizen, which he is not. Yeah. Uh, what I understand, he is one year into his green card, mm -hmm. which means he has roughly about four more years to go. However, he's under the impression that because he's a sports athlete, we can speed the process along. <laughs> and I'm sorry. I think there are plenty of examples <laughs> yeah. where that just hasn't happened, hasn't no. worked out. No. I mean, we would have, how, many, how many other faces would we have uh, playing for the U.S. national team? At yeah, this point. exactly. It's not a big <laughs> priority for the United States no. government to uh, push soccer through soccer player. player. He wants yeah. to be a U.S. citizen, so he should play for national team. Right. He might as well play right. on the United States cricket <laughs> team. You know, uh, that's how much it means to them. All right. Who, who does he think we are? Yeah. Cutter. <laughs> cutter. Cutter. I, was, I said both. I said both variations. Guitar. Cutter. Honestly. It, yeah. <laughs> they have a whole team full of Brazilians by. Um, you know, and there are more. Uh, there's more negative comments that we're going to get on YouTube. Thanks. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm used to those. The dog handles it well. So, uh, all right. Um, go. Oh, did you hear that uh, Dos Santos, his uh, agent, his rep, um, was interviewed because uh, I guess a question came up. Well, what about coming to MLS? Because you know, Dos Santos is getting zero time at Tottenham, and he'll be riding that pine for a long time for uh, Harry Redknapp. And uh, so, you know, they said, hey, well, you know, what about these other options like MLS? His rep said MLS, and I quote, is not a league for 22-year-olds. What the hell was that guy smoking? Come on. Has he not been paying any well, attention at know, all? He gets, yeah. <laughs> he gets a couple games every now and then for Tottenham, but then he gets loaned out for the second half of the season, which I'm, I don't know if he's been loaned out here. I didn't, I didn't see his name on the, uh, on no. the transfer list or anything. No. So I don't know if he got loaned out at all. No. Not so, to yeah, MLS. He'll, he'll probably be writing uh, quite a bit of pine with on him, but um, yeah, I mean, God, I mean, how many how many twenty two year olds are going to play for MLS? I mean, yeah. I mean, I think I think I mentioned one earlier, actually, a nineteen year old that just signed a designated player. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, no, also the number of United States national teamers that are under twenty two. Mm -hmm. and just, yep. it, it list goes on and on. It does. I, I think I think Dos Santos could find a better gig somewhere, a higher paying gig. Yep, I agree. Um, I agree. Just don't. No doubt. Just don't diss the MLS while you're doing yeah, it. It wasn't necessary to say. I mean, I, I thought it was a really uh, a tool remark. You know. Yeah. It was exactly. A douchebag. What is? No, it was not Dos Santos being a douchebag. I'm just saying that his rep. His rep. His agent his rep was being a douchebag. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> anyhow, uh, we'll we then come to the whole. This is an article by Robert, Rob, Rob. He goes by Rob Mitchum, uh, in a um, uh, in a I don't know website I've never been to before, but we were pointed to it called the Classical. Cool. Yeah, I've never heard. I've never read anything, and now I know why I don't read anything on that site. Uh, anyhow, the guy has this whole article about you know how MLS and especially your beloved. Um, Chicago Fire are giving up the sanctity of their uniform by having the Quaker Oats um, emblem across their chest instead of their traditional white stripe with the word fire on it. Like, we're not going to know who they are. I mean, this guy really seems to have a problem with the fact that teams <clears throat> all over the world, actually, he's just really having a problem with the MLS ones, um, although he does cite examples of other teams doing it. But there's a reason we do it, right, Brett? I mean, that, there's a reason that this should not upset him or anybody else, for that matter. First off, did you know? Did you know the poster uh, who commented on it that said uh, that agreed with him? That basically said, like, oh, when you think of Henri, what do you think of? You think of O2. Yeah. You think of Beckham. What do you think of? You think of Sharp. I don't. It's like I don't. <laughs> who, who the hell <laughs> said that? Some some random poster. I thought that comment was quite humorous because I'm like nobody thinks that. I do not associate Beckham with Sharp, and I certainly do not associate Henri with O2. Give yeah. me a break. That's like I mean, saying we associate Donovan with Herbalife. I mean, come on, this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, in, in a game with no commercial uh, breaks, 
they have to find a uh, revenue source through other avenues. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a halftime, they have a pregame, and they have a postgame. That's all they have. So they have to find uh, money somewhere else. Yeah. TV rights is the big deal. However, TV rights for MLS at this point isn't really that high. It's it's good for the league, but it's not good for every single team. Right. Um, so they have they have to find these avenues other way other ways you know. Right. So um, I mean, he compares MLS to a bunch of other leagues like M- NBA, NFL, MLB. But uh. you know what? The one American uh, one American sport he doesn't compare it to mm. is NASCAR. Oh yeah. NASCAR is good littered. point. That's... They litter their cars with advertisements. It's and not a they... it's not a sport, first of all, but I'll get into that later. <laughs> <laughs> well, why does NASCAR do that? Is so that they yeah. can pay for workers. They can pay. They they basically can fund the race. Right. They, they can fund everything. That's the exact same thing that MLS and every other sport, uh, every other soccer league around the world is doing. Mm-hmm. They sell the advertisement space on their jersey because it funds the team. Right. That seven point five million, uh, the fire going to be able to fund the academy, the yep. players, their teams for a number of years. Mm-hmm. Uh, any stadium improvements or renovations or just fixes, mm. and, and and other various aspects of it, just the employees in general, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I agree. I mean, it's 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 silly. He he actually says, but the greed of European teams looks more like survival in MLS survival. How about just growth? How about just stability? Why do we have to go to survival? Like the league's going to fall apart tomorrow. Does this guy know anything about MLS? I mean, yeah, he, he talks about how the league's been around for such a short time. It could go. He acts like it's going to uh, self-implode at, at any minute. Does he know how cautious Major League Soccer has been? This has been like baby steps, step by step by step process. This league is not going to crash and burn anytime soon in fact it's been growing by teams but you know every year for a number of years so come on let's just this guy needs to calm down number one and quit comparing mls to major league baseball and national league the national football league that's his problem right there um and there's nothing wrong with you know you're not crushing any great tradition in Chicago, the freaking team's only been around since 1998. If it was around since 1898, maybe I'd see his point. But, you know, if team, teams like Liverpool don't have a, a problem putting Carlsbad, Carlsberg on their on their jerseys that they did for many years, then we shouldn't have much of a problem with the fire putting Quaker Oats on their uniform. At least I don't, and I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. No. And it seems to be a mixed emotion as far as the fans are concerned, simply because I mean, I mean simply because of the whole white stripe issue. Uh, that's the one big tradition that Chicago's always had is that whole white fireman stripe across the jersey. And you know, I can understand why they did that. Although they could have gone around it and they could have just made the Quakers and the Quaker character uh, blue, although that would have looked a little strange. Yeah. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah. You know, but in all honesty. I wonder how many NFL, NBA, MLB uh, uh, owners would uh, reject the idea of taking a hundred million plus for sponsorship rights on their jerseys. Seriously, if, if Pepsi came up and said, "Hey, hmm. New York Yankees, I will pay you a hundred and fifty million dollars uh, in a over a course of a three year span to put my name on your jersey," if, if MLB if MLB let them do it, do you think they would reject it? Mm, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if they would. The That's league, a lot of money. The league wouldn't let them. First of That's all, That's the thing. Yes. yes, I'm just saying. If the yeah. league let, if the league let the teams do it, how many of those teams do you think would say, you know what, I'm going to say no to your nine figure deal. I yeah. don't need that money. Yeah. Of yeah. course, they're not going to say that. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Exactly. Um. I. I. You know. I really just. I. I think you may have mentioned in a post somewhere that the white stripe hasn't even always been on the jersey, number one. And while the white stripes are a great band and a very decent beer, I just don't... I, now, that would have been a really cool a sponsor. White stripe beer? Yeah. There's a white stripe. I know, the red, I know red stripe. Oh, is there red stripe? You're right. Okay. Ah, ah red stripe say. beer. Isn't red stripe beer Jamaican? Yes, it is. Okay, so white stripe beer must be from Bahama or something. I don't know. Anyhow, the <laughs> point being that I don't really think it was uh, that big of a loss, and I can even live without the white stripe. If you look at the uniforms across the uh, the, the world, 
Some teams change their uniforms dramatically every other season, it seems like. Um, Arsenal freaking went to a totally different color of red for a while. You know, that didn't really spook people that bad. So anyhow, I guess the point is that, you know, it's nothing to, uh, you know, uh, have a hissy fit about. He go he goes on a tangent of saying that the uh, the leagues like leagues in all around Europe they don't really change their jersey that much they change they keep it pretty much the same however they alter their sponsorships that's how they sell jerseys from year to year I'm like that's not <laughs> that's, that's actually not true yeah a lot of teams keep the same jersey uh, sponsorship for a large number of years yeah yeah you that's know? true some of them sign two it, to three it, year it, contracts it just seems strange that he mentioned that I'm like. No, you probably should have looked that up. Yeah. That's not true at all. And if yeah, and if he hasn't noticed lately, you know, in the end, tradition's fine, but in the end, all teams, whether you're the Chicago Fire or you're Manchester United, they all need the extra cash. And that's yes. just a fact, Jack, and that's how things work. You know, just keeping the idea of the sports team as far as as a sports team, you know, uh, it's nice, however, sports these days are a business. Yeah. You know, people invest money, they expect to get money back, you know, so it's, it's, they're going to, it's, tradition's nice, you know, but it's not the bottom line, because if, if you want to keep tradition, you, you know, the EPL might actually end up resorting back towards lower standards. Yeah. If they, if they, dro- if they drop all their, their quote-unquote sellout options, they're going to resort to a lower, lo- lower quality lead, because somebody will sell out. And somebody will have the money to purchase players and so forth. Yeah. You know? That's got, pretty much what the EPL has done is they, yeah. they have the money to invest in the players. I guess, you know, really we should blame Tweed Thornton. I don't even know who that guy is that's quoted throughout this. But one of his quotes that really bugged me was uh, he says, I could see a day where MLS sponsorship is flipped on its head and it becomes a joke to have a, a sell I have a, I guess I can't really, this quote doesn't make sense, to sell stuff on your jersey. You are so financially unstable and unpopular, you need it. What? Again, that gets, gets this quote drives me nuts. You are, he's basically saying, MLS is so financially unstable and so unpopular, they need a freaking Quaker Oats thing on their jersey. That's the opposite of why they have a Quaker Oats thing. They are actually stable enough and popular enough where Quaker Oats said to the fire, it makes sense for us to have us sponsor your jersey and have our symbol on it because we might sell some more cereal or oats or whatever the hell, oatmeal. You know what I mean? So he's the opposite of what he said is actually true. Well, I think he was approaching it more from an average American sports fan, not necessarily a soccer fan who understands the uh, uh, understands the sponsorship thing. And I think the person who wrote this is more of an av- the whole article itself is more of an average sports fan mm-hmm. uh, who doesn't quite understand it, you know. So, uh, and at, at, and you made the comment that uh, you know if you're stable enough and you're popular enough that I should. You know, put my logo on your jersey for X amount of dollars that I may actually sell some more cereal or some more bars or whatever. Mm-hmm. I've actually gone out and bought quite a few uh, Cinnamon Lifes myself. Have you? I have. All yes. Right. I've been eating it every day since they uh, uh, since they announced it. I've had a bowl of, of uh, Cinnamon Life. That is amazing. Every day. I didn't know anybody ate that anymore. Oh, that stuff's delicious. Is it? Me? I have to go out and Wonderful. get that. I do like their uh, the bars that they have that are covered with, with chocolate. Have you ever had mm-hmm. those? God, those yeah. are good. And I used to eat one of those, you know, on the way to work in the morning if I had to mm-hmm. drive all the way to Indianapolis, you know, for any reason. And uh, I think that is it for tonight. So uh, for Brett and for myself, this has been the Straight Red Card. Good night. <laughs>